The McLaren 720S is one of those cars that makes you think, where and when is this all going to end? Well, who knows, but one thing is for sure. McLaren's customers certainly know what they want, which is why the 209,000 pound, 710 bhp, 212 mile an hour 720S is already sold out for the next year. And remember, this is a regular production road car, not a limited edition one-off special. The 720S is powered by a new 4-litre version of McLaren's familiar twin-turbo V8 that's built by British engineering firm Ricardo. The tub is all new, says McLaren, and is called the Monocage 2, while the all-round double wishbone suspension is a development of the original computer-controlled system pioneered on the original 12C. Overall stiffness is way up, they say, and weight is well down compared with the 650S. There's also a lot more aero this time, while the electronic drive program has been simplified but improved to provide four settings, auto, comfort, sport and track. The brakes are carbon ceramics and the doors are the same dihedral design featured on the F1 all those years ago. They look great but also make getting in and out a whole lot easier as well. And thanks to much narrower A-pillars that are made from carbon fibre this time, the all-round visibility is much improved too. McLaren launched the car in Italy last week at the fearsome Vallelunga circuit just outside Rome. So here's a little taster of what the 720S is like to drive. Right, 720S. I've just driven it from Rome to the circuit here at Vallelunga. I'm getting all sorts of beeping noises going on at me here because the tyre pressures are far too low, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to try and talk over those and we're going to have to just ignore them because McLaren have said just go out and ignore them because the tyre pressures are too low. But anyway, I've just driven it from Rome to Vallelunga on really horrible, rutted, nasty roads. And the ride quality and the overall refinement quality of this thing, if you dial it back into comfort, is absolutely extraordinary given what happens when you subsequently drive it on a track because I mean the 720 is one of these cars that it just makes you think where is this all going to end honestly how much more power how much more performance are they going to be able to throw at these things before somebody somewhere says no stop that it's silly, it's ridiculous, it's more than fast enough. I don't know. But then, you start to drive this thing properly in track mode, not in comfort mode, but in track mode, and it's absolutely flipping unbelievable. God, it's got so much aero grip. And the way it stops, it's just ridiculous. This car, you have to keep reminding yourselves that this car has got set number plates on it. Lovely, lovely steering as well. <clears throat> bags and bags and bags of grip. And then just when you think it's gonna run out of grip, it gives you a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, this is third gear corner and the front is just pinned. Absolutely pinned. For God's sake. Oh, my word. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. gearbox just absolutely where you want it doing exactly what you want it to do the whole time. McLaren's a bit cagey about the car's downforce numbers 
but in truth the 720S generates nearly 200 kilograms of the stuff at 150 miles an hour. But it's the balance it displays at high speed that shows just how much progress has been made in this specific area. Dynamically, as well as in its cabin, its build quality, pretty much everywhere in fact, the 720S represents a huge leap forwards over the already quite tasty 650S. And for sure there will be faster, lighter, more powerful, yet more ferocious versions to come, with both a Spider and an LT model already confirmed for the future. So the answer to that original question really is, who knows where it will all end? Just for a moment though, Forget the moral dilemma that surrounds cars like the 720S and sit back and indulge yourself for a while in this. McLaren will not admit as much publicly, but behind closed doors, they kind of, kind of prepared to admit that this thing is quicker than a P1. Certainly around a track like this, where there are no really long straights, and there are lots of twists, lots of turns, lots of heavy braking areas. And this car costs 209,000 pounds, 218,000 pounds in this specification which has got a few carbon bits on it and the fruity seats. And it's quicker than a P1, which remember costs one million pounds. So what are the bits that blow you away? Well, just about everything. I mean, the straight line performance is absolutely off the dial. <sighs> New four litre turbocharged engine, but there is no lag at all. And the response, that's 5,000, that's, Oh, for heaven's sake, it is just rude how fast this car feels. It, if you weren't told it wasn't turbocharged, if you weren't told it was turbocharged, you wouldn't know. You would not know. There is lovely feel through the brake pedal. They've made quite a few changes to the suspension front and rear, although it is. No, it's not fundamentally a 650S. It is from that family of car, but. This is, this is stage two, basically, of that car. It's got what they call the Monocell 2 chassis tub, so another development of the carbon chassis. All sorts of tweaks to the gearbox, all sorts of tweaks to the suspension, steering, everything. They reckon, fundamentally, this car is 91% new. <laughs> Gosh, it made a very weird noise then, but I'm not sure it liked that, but oh dear, oh dear, I don't know where to stop. It's hard to know where to start, but it's even more difficult to know where to stop. And I'm going to do that now because I'm going to get completely carried away otherwise. And unfortunately, all these warning lights are continuing to flash on the dash. It's actually saying stop vehicle now, so I'm wondering whether there might be a slight problem with one of the front wheels. But my goodness me, this is so much car for 209,000 quid. They should be charging another 100,000 quid for this, at least. This or a 488, I don't know, need to do it before I'm prepared to go anywhere near giving you an answer to that question. But being no doubt, this thing is benchmark brilliant.
click on the video windows to watch a first drive or a track battle of the McLaren 570S and the 570 GT, click on the play icon to watch our latest video or on our logo to subscribe.